Hey there, it's Ash from Elemental. WordPress has evolved from a simple blogging platform into a sophisticated content management system. And we often find the need to create more and more customized and unique website experiences. But how can we achieve this? The answer is by using custom post types, taxonomies, and custom fields. In this tutorial, we will learn first of all what all these elements are, and then we'll show you how to create and implement these features into your own website. So grab a coffee, get comfy, and let's take your website building knowledge to the next level. Before we get started, let's first take a look at what we're going to build. Our website is a health and wellness blog. As the website has grown, so has the need for more unique content. The business owner has decided they would like to add a directory which will contain information about services and businesses that they recommend. The website is going to have a new area which will show a grid of recommended businesses from the website owner. These recommendations will be displayed first of all on an archive page. Selecting one of the recommendations will take the visitor to a dedicated single post, which will display a whole host of information, all created with custom fields. Throughout this tutorial, we'll be using the Mindy template kit, which you can install via the kit library so you're able to follow along with ease. If you're unsure how to install a kit from the library, please follow the link in the description below to find out how. And finally, before we get started, you will need Elementor Pro for this tutorial, and ideally you should have ample experience using Elementor, which includes using the Theme Builder. If you need to brush up on these aspects, you'll find some useful resources below. So what exactly are custom post types, fields, and taxonomies? Let's explore what these are in order, starting with custom post types. By default, WordPress comes with these post types. We have post, page, attachment, revision, and navigation menu. These default post types may be suitable for many website projects, but if you need to create something a little more unique, then you'll need to create a custom post type. For example, in this tutorial, we're going to create a directory post type, which will display contact information and content about specially selected companies. We can create a custom post type by manually adding some PHP to our functions.php file. Or a much simpler way is to install a third party plugin. In our tutorial, we're going to use a free plugin called Custom Post Type UI. This plugin will allow us to create and manage custom post types which can be used for a whole range of requirements. We'll then use the same plugin to create a custom taxonomy for our new post type. But what is a taxonomy? Within WordPress, a taxonomy is a means of putting posts together based on a set of connections. A typical WordPress post will contain two taxonomies which are by default categories and tags. Categories allow for broad grouping of content, while tags allow for specific grouping. These are a useful method to ensure that related material on your website is easy to locate for users. We're going to create a new taxonomy for our directory to easily identify the type of businesses that we're showcasing. This not only provides great organization in our admin panel, but also provides additional navigation options on the front end of our website. And last but not least, we have custom fields. So what exactly are custom fields? Custom fields allow users to add more data and information when creating posts. WordPress stores this information so that it can be displayed on the front end of a website. And this is where Elementor comes in. By using the Elementor editor, we're able to easily select this dynamic content to display on our website. Let's get started by creating our first custom post type. As mentioned, we're going to install a free plugin called Custom Post Type UI. This plugin provides a user-friendly and simple way of creating custom post types for your website. Once installed and activated, you will see a new menu item called CPT UI. There are many options shown here, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the top two options, Add Edit Post Types and Add Edit Taxonomies. If we select Add Edit Post Types, we're presented with the following screen. Here we can enter all of the necessary details required to create our new custom post, which will allow us to create a specific and unique area on our website to display our directory. The first and the most important settings are located at the top of the page, and as you can see, these are all mandatory. 
We only need to focus on the basic settings initially, and we'll start by giving our custom post type a slug. This should be lowercase, and if you wish to use multiple words, separate them with an underscore. We're going to call ours directory. Next, we need to add the plural and single labels, which are used in the admin menu. In these fields, we'll enter businesses for the plural label and business in the singular label. If we now select add post type, the page reloads and a couple of things have changed. We can now see the new custom post type in the admin menu, and we also have new tabs at the top of this page. To view previously created post types, select the Edit Post Types tab. Then use the drop down to select the post type that you wish to amend. Because we've only created one post type so far, this is all that we see. Let's continue configuring this post type. Scroll down until you see the section titled Additional Labels. Here we can specify the text used in the labels for our post type. Scrolling back up allows us to also populate the labels with a connection to the single and plural fields previously entered. We can also amend any of these fields manually if we like. Let's minimise these first two sections to tidy up the screen a little. The third and final areas allow us to configure the settings of our post type. There are a couple of important configurations we need to make for our website, so let's scroll down to the Has Archive section. This will switch to True, as we would like to build an archive for our new custom post type. The next aspect that we'll amend is to set Hierarchical to True. This will allow us to have parent-child relationships with our post type. Even if you don't plan on using this structure initially, it's a good idea to enable it in case you need to make changes in the future. Next up, we have some options for how our post type appears in the menu. We can set a number here if we would like to position our post type at a specific position in the menu. We'll leave Show in Menu as True, as this allows us to quickly add a new company via the top menu. And here we can change the icon associated with the menu item. Selecting the dash icon link opens this useful reference where you can copy, then paste a new dash icon into your settings. The preview shows instantly, and when we save these settings, the icon will show in the menu. Under Supports, we're able to choose which built-in editor features we would like to enable for our post type. We'll leave the three default options, which are Title, Editor, and Featured Image, and we'll be sure to add our own custom field soon. The final two options here will leave blank, but if you need to add support for the built-in WordPress taxonomies, you can control that here. Once finished, let's save our post and explore just what we've created. In the main menu, we can see our new directory post type, with our new updated icon, and if we hover over this item, we can see two options, which are for All Businesses and Add New. Select All Businesses first of all, and you'll see a blank table. This is where all of our posts will appear once we've added them. Select Add New now, and you'll see that we have the three default supports enabled which are for the title, editor, and under the business tab, featured image. We'll be using the default fields for our new directory post type, but more importantly, we'll be adding some unique custom fields. Before we explore how to create and add these, let's first set up a taxonomy for our directory. Navigate your way to CPT UI, add edit taxonomies, and here we can create and assign our new taxonomy. First, give it a slug, plural name, singular name, and then auto-populate the fields just like we did with the custom post type. And if we scroll down, we can see that all the fields have been populated. Now the important part. Be sure to select the custom post type you would like to assign this taxonomy to. In our case, we'll select businesses. Once done, select add taxonomy to save your progress so far. Now head to the Edit Taxonomies tab and select your new taxonomy. Let's minimise these first two sections. Scroll down and change Hierarchical to True for the same reasons we did when creating the directory post type. Now let's create our new taxonomy. In the menu now we can see the new taxonomy has been created and added to our directory post type. Selecting this will allow us to create as many entries as we like. Let's add a few now to get things started. OK, great. Now it's time to create some custom fields and add them to our new custom post type. 
Before we learn how to do this, we must first install the free plugin which will allow us to create new custom fields. The plugin we're going to install is called Advanced Custom Fields, or ACF for short. ACF, as you can see, has over 1 million installations with a 5 star rating, so you should feel pretty confident it's a great plugin. Install and then activate the plugin. Once this is done, you'll see a new menu item called Custom Fields. Let's now head to ACF to create our contact information, social media links, rating and review custom fields. Select the Add New button and let's first add a title. Type Directory Fields and then set a location rule so that these custom fields appear on the correct post type. Using the drop down, change post to business. Now select the Add Field button to create our first custom field. Starting with the website, enter website display text in the title field and hit tab, which will automatically populate the field name for us. We'll leave the field type as text and we can now choose if we would like to add instructions, whether it is required or not, a default value, placeholder text, text to show before and after the field, and a character limit. These options will appear for most custom fields and for the purpose of our tutorial, we're going to leave them blank, but feel free to configure these if you so wish. We'll set the width to 50%, which will help us keep the edit screen organized. Once finished, close the field and add another one. Let's now create the custom field for our website link, add the field label, and then change the field type to URL. Again, we'll set the width here to 50%, this time we'll enter telephone number and then leave it as text. We'll leave the width blank this time as it will default to 100% if left unpopulated. Next we'll add address and choose text area from the field type which will give us some more room to enter the company's address. Let's now add in our social media links. Add the name, change it to URL and set the width to 33.3% so that it takes up a third of the space available on the edit screen. Close this field and then use the helpful duplicate option twice more for the other social media links. Then update the label and names accordingly. Now close and add another one. This time we'll enter review and under field type choose WYSIWYG editor. This stands for what you see is what you get and adds the default WordPress editor, which allows you to apply formatting to text as well as media to your content. Let's set the width of this field to 80%. Now close this field and then add one last one. This one will be called rating and we'll set the field type to number. Because we're going to link this to a five star rating widget, we must apply some rules to ensure that it works correctly. The minimum value will set to zero, maximum value will set to five, and step size will set to 0.1, which will allow for these increments. We'll also enable conditional logic and then set it to show only if information has been entered into the review field. Set the width here to 20% and then let's update and check out just what we've created. Go to directory, add new, and as you can see, we have a whole host of new fields to populate. We of course have our default title, editor, and featured image but we also now have fields for the website display text, website link, telephone number, address, social media links, review, and if we type something into the review editor, the rating field appears and allows us to enter a value up to five. Now that all of our custom fields, taxonomy, and post type have been created, let's create a post so that we can jump into the Elementor editor and create our single post template. We'll add the company name, the company description, website display text, website address link, telephone number, address, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn URLs, review, rating, featured image, and finally, as you can see, we have an industries dropdown. Here we can select the category which our post applies to. Once finished, publish your first custom post.
We've made great progress so far by first of all learning what custom posts, taxonomies and fields are and what they're capable of doing. We then created these using the free plugins from Custom Post Types UI and Advanced Custom Fields. Now that we've learned how to set up and configure these aspects, it's time to learn how to display these custom values on our website. We'll now focus on the Elementor side of things by heading to the Theme Builder. Here we can create the template files associated with our custom post type. This will allow us to display the custom fields on our website. In the Theme Builder, select Add New and choose Single Post. Dismiss the library and let's start adding our elements to populate our custom post type. Start with adding a new one column section. Set the width, gap and then add some margin. Now add the post title widget. This widget will automatically populate the field with the name of the post. But hold on, we're not seeing the company name that we've just created. Well luckily Elementor makes this very easy to fix. Select the gear icon located in the bottom left hand corner. And under preview settings, choose business first of all. And then do a search for a post that you've created. Select apply in preview and then the Elementor editor will reload to show you the content pulled from our custom post type. Now set your alignment and typography. Next we need to add the featured image and we're going to do it by using the spacer widget. Drop this into position, set the height and then switch over to the advanced tab and open the background settings. Enable classic and then if you hover over the image box you'll see the dynamic tags icon. Select this and then choose featured image. Now set the position Attachment, Repeat and Size. Let's head back to our heading and apply a couple more tweaks to achieve our design requirements. In the Advanced tab, set the bottom margin to minus 30 pixels and the Z index to 2. This will ensure that it appears on top of our featured image. OK, that's a great start. Moving on, let's now create the elements which will display the contact information, star rating and social media links. Add a new section, set its width and apply some margin. Now select the column and adjust its padding. Drop in the heading widget and then change the HTML tag to P. Now in the style tab, change the typography and weight. Switching back to the content tab, let's now update this to automatically display the taxonomy. Select dynamic tags, choose post terms, then click the wrench icon. And under taxonomy, we're going to choose the custom taxonomy that we've previously set up, which in our instance is industries. If we had multiple taxonomy set up, we can decide what separates them. We can also choose to enable a link which will take the user to all posts under this category. Open the advanced tab next and you'll see we're able to enter text to show before or after our dynamic content as well as fallback text. We'll add category followed by a colon and space. And if we now check out our widget, you can see the dynamic data is displaying for us. Let's duplicate this widget so that we don't need to apply the styles again and then remove the existing dynamic rule by selecting the cross. Open the dynamic tags and scroll to the bottom until you see ACF and then select ACF field. Selecting the wrench icon now allows us to choose one of our custom fields. In this instance, we'll select telephone number. To complete this first section, we'll now drop in the star rating widget. We'll style it first by setting the size, spacing and colour. Then in the content tab, choose the dynamic tags icon next to the rating field. Because this field can only be populated with a number, these are the only options that we're presented with. Select the wrench icon and choose the rating custom field. Now that we have the three elements which will populate the first section, let's make some adjustments so that they all appear on the same line. Select the category and head over to the advanced tab. Under positioning, change this to inline. Now copy the styles of this element and paste them onto the telephone number to mimic the inline styling. Because the rating widget is a different element, we can't simply paste the same inline style. So we'll set this manually. 
OK, that's all of the elements on the same line. Let's now space them out. Select the column which holds all of these, and then set the vertical align to middle, and the horizontal align to space between. Fantastic! Let's now duplicate this entire section to give us a head start on the next elements. We'll just remove the margin on this second section. Now choose the Duplicator category, and amend the dynamic tags to display our website instead. We'll set the display link first of all, and then in the link field, we'll set the website link. If we select the gear icon, we can also choose to open this into a new window. Now change the phone number so that it displays the address. Finally, let's remove the ratings and then add in a social icons widget. Set this as inline first of all, and then amend the styles, starting with the colours, then size, padding, spacing, and row gap. Now set the hover colour. Next open the Facebook social icon, and let's set the dynamic link. If we select the gear icon, we can see that the widget automatically opens this into a new window, so we'll leave this as it is. Let's now repeat the process for the Twitter icon. And finally, we'll update the YouTube icon to be LinkedIn instead, and then we'll set the link. Moving on, we'll now add the sections which will display the company information and review. Add a new section and set its width, margin, and padding. Now add the post title widget. Change the HTML tag to H2, typography to secondary, add 20 pixels margin to the bottom, and amend the padding. Open the border tab, set the border type to solid, bottom to one pixel, and color. Now back in the content tab, select the wrench icon, and in the advanced area, add about in the before field, followed by a space. Now we'll drop in the post content widget. This will automatically display the content entered into the WordPress editor. The only amendment here is to adjust the padding. Now for the review section, drop in a heading widget, amend the text, change the HTML tag, then copy the styles from our first heading and paste them onto this one. Now add some margin to the top. The very last step is to drop in the text editor widget. Let's set the styles first of all by copying them from the previous block of text, and now select the dynamic tag, head to ACF field, and then choose the review field. OK great, things have really come together for our template. Let's now set a template name and then configure our display settings. Select the gear icon in the bottom left corner and rename your template to something that will help you easily identify it. Let's now publish our template, and as you can see, we're presented with the publish settings pop up. Choose add condition first of all, then use the drop down to find and select our business's custom post type. Doing so will ensure this template is applied to all posts created with this post type. Save and close, and now let's test it out. Back in the WordPress dashboard, let's navigate our way to our directory post. Hover over the item, and then select View. As you can see, our new post is appearing correctly and looks great. Whilst we've made great progress with learning how to create a custom post type with custom fields, and then learn how to create a single post template within the theme builder, we still have a crucial step to take, and that is to create an archive template for our custom post types. In the URL bar, if we remove the slug for this particular company and then hit enter, we can see the default screen for displaying posts. As you can see, it's not the most visually pleasing design and certainly doesn't fit in with the rest of our website. Let's jump back into the WordPress dashboard to discover just how to fix this. First, let's create some more posts so that we have ample content to properly preview our archive template. Now head back to the theme builder. Select Add New first of all, and then choose Archive. Dismiss the library, and then add a new section. Define your styles.
and then add in a heading widget and do the same. Now open up the widgets panel and drop in the archive posts widget. Just like with our single template file, we need to amend the preview settings to properly preview the content. Open the settings, preview settings, select businesses archive, and then apply and preview. Okay, great. Now that we can see the correct posts, it will be much easier to style this page. The archive widget has many options to configure and style our post previews and certainly provides an easy to use method for creating a grid layout of posts. However, we'd like a more customized approach here, which will allow us to display additional elements, like the star rating review we added to our custom post type. But how do we achieve this? The answer is to create a custom loop. By creating a custom loop, we're able to design our post archive items exactly how we would like them to appear. Let's name our archive template and then save it as a draft. Let's now enable the functionality that we need to create a custom loop. Head back to the WordPress dashboard and navigate to the plugins area. We're going to install a plugin called Elementor Custom Skin. Once installed and activated, head back to the theme builder and you'll see a new item called Loop. Let's add a new loop. Dismiss the library and as you can see we're presented with a default Elementor editor. Before we start creating our loop, let's first rename our template file and then update the preview settings to display content from one of our custom posts. We'll add a section first, set our width, and then remove any gaps. Now we'll drop in the featured image widget. Change the image size, and under link, choose custom URL. Select the dynamic tags option, and choose post URL. This will ensure that when clicked, the visitor is taken to the post page. Switch to the Style tab and now set the width. We can also apply a subtle hover effect to add interactivity to our design. Now add a heading widget. Then use the Dynamic Tag option to populate this with the post title. Next, set the Dynamic Link to Post URL again to ensure that when this is clicked, it takes the visitor to the post page. Let's now center the text, change the global font, and then apply some margin. Next we're going to add our star rating. Find and drop in the widget underneath our heading. We'll populate it first with our rating custom field. Center it. Amend the size, spacing, and color. Fantastic, this is really coming together now. Just a couple more elements and then we're ready to see how this works in our archive template. Drop in the text editor widget. Under dynamic tags, choose the post summary option. This option will automatically populate the text editor with content entered into the default WordPress editor. Selecting the wrench icon allows you to adjust just how many words are displayed. We'll set ours to 20. We'll then set the styles. And then add in a button widget. Set the dynamic link, alignment, amend the text, set your typography, and hover styles. Okay, great. Let's now hit the publish button, and as you can see, we're presented with the publish settings pop up. We actually do not need to assign any specific conditions, so we'll simply select save and close. Let's now open our directory archive by typing Command or Control E to open the Elementor Finder. If we now select our archive post widget and then select the skin drop down, we can see an option called Custom. Choosing this opens a new field where we can select our new loop template. With our custom skin enabled, we still have access to amend the pagination and advanced settings. And as you can see, Elementor Custom Skin has an array of premium options available in the pro version of this plugin. We can amend the columns though, so let's do that now. Let's now publish our archive and we'll set the display conditions to Businesses Archive. 
We have one final step to ensure that our website visitors can access our new custom post type with ease, and that's to add a link to our menu. Let's use the Elementor Finder again, and this time we'll search for Menu. Once the menu screen has loaded, we can see on the left hand side a tab which contains our custom posts. If we select View All, we can see the archive link appears. Check this option and then add to menu. Drag to rearrange and then rename the menu item if you so wish. Save your menu and if we now visit our website, you'll see the new directory link appears in the menu. Selecting this takes us to our archive page and then if we select one of the companies, we can see the single post page with all of the auto-populated content. Throughout this course, we've explored multiple aspects which will allow you to create some truly unique website experiences. We first learnt what custom posts, taxonomies and fields are, and the possibilities of what they can achieve. Next, we learnt how to create these elements using a series of free plugins, all of which are available from the WordPress plugin repository. Then in part 2 of our course, we dived into the Elementor Theme Builder to create our single, archive and loop templates. We learnt just how efficient Elementor is at displaying our custom data and linking our designs to our custom posts. Creating custom fields and post types in WordPress is made extremely easy thanks to ACF and Custom Post Types UI. And with the fantastic capabilities brought in by using Elementor Custom Skin, you have an extensive toolkit to be able to create truly bespoke website creations. Be sure to share your websites in the comments below and let us know if you have any questions about using Elementor with these additional tools. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing tutorials.